E4 and C5. The opening moves between Gucci Reza Firuja with white and Mulberry Craftsman with black. It's the Global Chess League. We're reaching the climax. The winning team here goes to the finals. So Ali Reza goes Knight F3. E6 on the board. We get an open Sicilian here. Captures, Knight captures. A6 initiates the Wrath of Khan. How do you open up such a rich position for explanation without a Grandmaster's support? Pull. So that's why Ferruja is uh, thinking here. How's Potom doing? Uh. <coughs> oh. Incredible insight there from GM Benjamin Bock. Do check out his great channel. He's been streaming the whole event. Now we see C4, the Maroxi bind. Gandalf proud as we bind them in the dark. Now we see Knight F6 hitting the pawn and it's defended. Epic commentary as always here on Stinky Epic. Mushrooms. Now Bishop B4, a big variation, but Queen C7 played. Now A3 takes control of that square and B6 going for a kind of hedgehog structure soon, but what are Black's plans? Again, we need that Grandmaster insight. It's gonna go here, 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 here. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh. <coughs> so Bishop E3 from Ali Reza, Bishop B7, F3 covers the center. All of the players playing the natural moves here, both players now castle, get the kings to safety, but first, take note, Magnus has set up the hedgehog structure. Don't touch those pawns if you ever play over the board without gloves or something. Very spiky. We see a king safety fist bump as they get them to safety. They explode it out. Now we get rook c1, eyeing the queen there. It's very uncomfortable. It's like watching Wesley So try and plant one on Kaya. Very uncomfortable sight there. Luckily, it didn't happen. Now we see knight b to d7, but before the knight can hit that c square and become a seahorse, Ali Reza shuts it down, takes the space. Rook a to c8 completes that rook tangle despite the pieces being in the way. Everyone has a chuckle. Queen d2, rook fe8, queen b3, or knight b3 rather, and queen b8 finally steps off the gaze of that rook. Rook FD1 from Ali Reza. It's move 16. It's very rare that we can say the opening has ended. The middle game is beginning. Usually more of a grey area. What's the plan for black here? Well, if in doubt, fling your rook pawn down the board. It's what Magnus does. And these are some of the top responses for white here. But Ali Reza doesn't play any of them at all. He plays bishop f4, and this is awesome. Magnus, like a spider, as they used to call the great Mickey Adams in this country, England, or still do, goes knight e5 and just starts spinning this web around Ali Reza. We get knight a4 hitting the undefended pawn, but now bishop c6 hits it, also opens with the queen. So Ali Reza goes knight b2. Do you really want to hop back to where you came from? Tail between your legs. He goes here, headed for here, and now h4. And in the space of just a few moves, look at Magnus's bishop, improved, knight, improved, pawn, pushing. Why didn't we see takes by the way, yes, you double, but you give black this massive dark squared grip here, get rid of the pawn, and there could be problems here. So instead, Ali Reza goes queen e3, but it's not precise as you can see. The bishop's had its retreat square taken, so knight g6 hits it. Bishop g5 is the planned follow up here, and now look at the breaks which Magnus is trying to achieve. b5, d5, classic ideas. He runs with b5 here. What an awesome game this is. Now you can take this pawn, wasn't played. Then black sits on the head of two using just one. Very nice. Instead, Ali Reza plays the good knight to d4, hits the bishop. Magnus saves it, stacks those clergymen. Look at the harmony of the pieces. I mean, there's something just really lovely about the way they look, right? It's like visiting an old person to have a cup of tea and biscuits. Just makes you feel good. Now we see pawn h3. Stops the advance of Magnus's pawn, but sets up some Swiss cheese on the dark squares. And now the game absolutely explodes. From here on out, we're on crazy tactics, time scramble. It's fantastic. What does Magnus do? D5 for the high five. 
Now, so many rich variations here, but we're not gonna start clicking down them all because I've got a curry to get to. Sorry, because I mean, we wanna stick with the game here and just analyze what the players did. Now you can take on B5, it wasn't played. You could look at pushing here and sacking a pawn and that kind of thing. None of it done. Ali Reza plays C5, given the miss, but it's so natural. Creating that passed pawn, of course, how dangerous is that? But now Magnus can play the excellent pawn to e5. Ignore the miss. It just doesn't make any sense. The computer gives it the same level as if you'd gone queen g3, but it marginally prefers queen g3. But this one played, knife f5 comes, and Magnus, quick as a flash, chops that one off the board, pawn recaptures, and knife f4 in response. Awesome dark squared play. Now the Stockness monster wants to chop the knight, Pawn recaptures and then play that position from there. But black's going to have a massive dark squared grip. So instead, we see takes on h4. Really natural move, but it misses a phenomenal shot for Magnus. This is why he practices, right? This is why he attends the Oslo training camps, visualizes positions like this. It's so he can land epic moves like knight to g4. What about that? He hits the queen here and you can't drop to f2 to support the unprotected bishop because the knight also covers that square. So the knight has to be captured. Bye bye pony. Now Magnus takes here. This is his point. Look at his domination of the dark squares once that bishop disappears. Knight d3. Uh, d3 meekly re-entering the game. Now d4, kicking around the lady, it centralizes, takes with check played, both bishops eliminated, and Magnus just steamrolling through the center here with the pawns. Look at that, coming down the board like space invaders, the knight hits f2, and it double hits these pawns now. The rooks open fire. You've got queen and knight here potentially. What does Magnus do? Queen f4, and it deals with both threats, because not only do you support here, but if rook takes on d4, the rook on c1 is undefended. So rook f1 is played. Now queen e5 stepping back, out of the gate, still covering this pawn. We get rook c to e1, pressuring e4 further, and now Magnus centralizes the queen like a black widow spider and opens up this rook to lend some support here. But this is where Ali Reza absolutely comes alive. Under the cosh, playing world number one, pawns running down, but somehow he finds a way to generate this counterplay. Watch this. So he's offering the pawn on g5, which Magnus doesn't take. If he does so, you can actually take on e4 with the knight. Even though you walk into a self-pin, then you can go say queen d3, queen f3, and okay, you are winning back the pawn. The reason you're trying to distract the bishop is so that then the rook doesn't drop on e1. So Magnus doesn't touch it. He takes on f5. D3 also a good move, but now Ali Reza goes queen h5. He's activating, hits that bishop. So what does Magnus do? Play the best move here, fair play to him, but obviously he finds it. It's a queen exchange being offered. He x-rays the bishop defense and he hits this one here. Ali Reza steps back, given the miss. The stock nest monster wanted to take here, but we don't see that played. But now Magnus can start rumbling these pawns. This is the problem. And if you move the knight, you drop the rook on e1. So again, there's only one move to just mix it up, make things weird. Ali Reza finds it. It's pawn to g3. Now, what should Magnus do in response? Well, he does not find the best continuation here. And I'm drawing it on the board. Simply take one of these pawns, let's say here. And now after captures like this, well, there's actually this move, e2. Not taking, but winning an entire exchange because of the problems you've got there. So we come back here. That's what Magnus should have done. Instead, he plays the very natural, takes on f2 with check, but now king recaptures here, queen c2 check, king g1 back, his bishop's about to drop, so he wins a pawn, fine, but after rook takes on e1, rook recaptures d3, suddenly Ali Reza's fighting and fighting hard. 
hits the rook that's unprotected and x-rays the unprotected queen and it's a level game once more after rook f8 from Magnus. Rook d8 more precise as a move coming behind this pawn. Now Ali Reza can go rook f1. He comes away from pawn d2 hitting that rook, still x-rays the queen and the game is just exploding because Magnus should go queen b3, keep an eye here but he goes queen c3. Ali Reza down to under 20 seconds, no increment on the clock either. And there's actually now a draw here for white after queen d5 centralizing, Magnus taking the pawn, you can play the stunning rook takes on f7, which Ali Reza doesn't do. We're in the back cave analysis mode because after rook recaptures, you're landing this perpetual. This is the point. If the rook blocks, you check from back here, and this is how you can then give the king the runaround. Doesn't matter what you do, you constantly just keep landing these checks. Nothing to escape it when the h file is exposed. Whoops, misfire. So we come back here. That was the way to go. But Ali Reza pushes with prawn to c ships here. Now we see takes on b4, c7, very deadly, but Magnus goes queen c4, offers that exchange of the ladies. Ali Reza declines, supports the queening square, keeps an eye on this pawn, keeps an eye here, very powerful piece. But Magnus pushes anyway, looking to exchange prisoners. He is two pawns up now, let's not forget. So rook d1 played, and Magnus now has a winning move here with queen to c1, but he misses it once more. If takes, then pawn recaptures. You're threatening to do this. If queen takes, you know, rook takes impossible, there's a pin. Then you can take here and you've exchanged the pawns. These ones are too powerful, should win out the day. But it wasn't played. Magnus checks. It suddenly gives up the advantage one more. He goes g6 and now rook takes on d2. Ali Reza is just a pawn down now and his own pawn's very deadly. King g7, queen d8 here. Very tricky move. We see queen c6 check. Now the king sidesteps. Rook e8 supporting the connection between those ones. And after h4, Ali Reza is now trying to open the black king. Technically a bad move because Magnus can go rook e1. Look for queen h1 checkmate. He misses it. They're both scrambling. Now rook f2. Played in just a moment after b3. Rook f2 here. And although Magnus's pawn is running, Ali Reza's got tricks. We see takes on h5. There was problems. If you kept on pushing, say you go a5, well now you can make a queen here distract this one and start checking from d4. There are big problems here in combination with the pawn, the rook. I'm not gonna keep going down the entire line, but this is the general idea. You're on the dark squares. So Magnus doesn't push, he reacts. He takes that pawn, he recognizes the danger. We now see queen g5 check, queen g6. Are we about to see a repetition? Ali Reza scrambling so low on the clock here. Magnus running with the king wants to use the time advantage but suddenly he's only 20 seconds ahead another check played and now how about this a massive massive blunder from Cagnus Marlson he plays Queen g6 intercepting look at stockfish have an absolute hernia why because you can capture Pawn takes back and rook d2. You switch back here and how do you stop this threat of bringing the rook down and then making the queen? If here you still bring the rook, the king's in the wrong place, it's getting checked. This is the big problem. How do you actually stop it? You're making a queen regardless of what you do. Here's one sample line. Or you take first rather, this would be a much better way. So this was the winning line. Ali Reza misses it, comes back with the queen. The bar collapses. Queen e6 once more. Another check. Magnus now recognizes, sidesteps. Rook f6, what a move. Mate in one now threatened. So the queen checks from down here. King g1, more checks on the board. This rook drops back because Magnus was invading. This is absolutely insane. Both players scrambling, pieces flying. Now queen e4 check. Rook f3 blocks, more checks on the board here. Magnus giving it the runaround and after g4 is a big mistake because you can take with check, win a rook, hang on a minute, bar still level because Ali Reza starts checking. This is the actual game. Queen d8 check, king g7, it's a draw by perpetual check if Ali Reza can carry on the moves. He cannot. 
He loses on time here, just. Magnus takes it. This is how the perpetual could go, and you just can't run away from it. Where are we? King G4, uh, Queen G5 check, King H7, this kind of thing. And if you block with the Queen, this is the key line. You then come to here, and once again, whoops. Oh, that's it, sorry. You do take the Queens off, and then you bring this one through. Should be a draw, apparently, because Black's got enough activity. Absolutely wild game. Magnus wins it. Apologies a bit rushed tonight. Hope you enjoyed and check out the video on screen for another epic game of chess. Cheers.